Photosynthesis is one of the most important chemical processes for life on this planet to even exist. Plants make use of the energy in sunlight to grow and reproduce, and as a byproduct, they pump out oxygen into the atmosphere. I think one of the most interesting things about this reaction, which is actually really complex, is that the ingredients that make the reaction possible are so simple. In order for something to grow and reproduce, the mass has to come from somewhere, right? And the same of course applies for plants. In the middle of the 17th century, a Dutch scientist by the name of Jan von Helmont did an experiment with plants where he precisely measured the weight of a plant and the soil that the plant was planted in. As the plant grew larger, he concluded that the mass of a plant must come from the water as that was the only thing that had been added to the plant besides sunlight. But what they didn't realize at the time is that they had missed a key component in this equation. What was missing in the equation was knowledge about atmospheric chemistry and the invisible gases that surrounds us all the time. And particularly important in this case, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas that is made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is actually pretty low, only 0.04%. But it plays an important role in many chemical processes. This small molecule in the air, carbon dioxide, is actually what becomes the foundation for the plant and ultimately everything else alive. During photosynthesis, the energy from the sun is used to break apart the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen, and then break the bonds between the carbon and oxygen atoms in the carbon dioxide molecule. The plants then use these released elements to form energy-rich sugar molecules called glucose, which is kind of a way to chemically hold the energy for later use. The carbon that originally came from carbon dioxide is now the main building blocks for these new energy molecules. When simplified, the reaction looks like this. And now you're all wondering, why is this important? Well, I'm so glad you asked. This is how it works. Glucose is kind of like the Lego brick of life. It's a cyclic hydrocarbon and several glucose molecules can be connected together and form, for example, starch and glycogen that are energy reserves in plants and animals. Or cellulose, which is like the scaffolding that makes up the mass of the plant. In addition, as a byproduct of the photosynthetic reaction, oxygen is pumped out into the atmosphere. And as you probably know, that is a pretty big deal for most life on the planet. Under the right conditions, you can actually observe this happening in real life. If you go snorkeling in clear water on a sunny day, you may notice small bubbles forming and being released into the water, like on this seagrass here. This is actually the oxygen being released in the water from the photosynthetic reaction. For a long time, it was believed that the oxygen came from the carbon dioxide molecule. But in the 1940s, two scientists called Samuel Rubin and Martin Kamen showed that it was in fact the oxygen from the water and not the carbon dioxide that was released into the atmosphere. When sunlight splits up the water molecules, the hydrogen eventually becomes part of the glucose molecule and the oxygen is released. Many are the scientists who have devoted their lives to this amazing reaction. And photosynthesis continues to be an active area of research. So far, 10 Nobel Prizes have been awarded to research related to the photosynthetic reaction. And it will not be surprising if more will come as scientists are now trying to mimic the photosynthetic reaction to come up with clean and safe energy solutions for the future. Photosynthesis is, is possibly the most extraordinary reaction that you ever will encounter in the, in the chemistry classes. I think if we can do the same thing, on an artificial basis, that we can take carbon dioxide and water with the help of the energy from the sun and create high energy fuels that we can fuel the technology that we all need for our living. If it wasn't for photosynthesis, we might not have had any life on this planet at all. And the interesting thing is that research within this area now has great potential in solving many of our existing energy problems. Sun is probably going to continue shining and there's probably not going to be a shortage in carbon dioxide or water either. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where this can take us in the future. Thanks for watching today and see you soon.